last time. I'm going to be across from him, but this time I'm going to push from the ends of the stick, and I'm going to push this direction, and he's going to try and resist me. I'm going to go the other direction, he's going to try and resist me. It's a little bit harder to hold the stick there. Okay, I'm going to go the other direction. Again, he's resisting me with his, with his torso. I'm going to go the other direction. Okay, again, we're going to go for about 30 seconds. Back this direction. Okay, back the other direction. Good, 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 and relax. Okay, good stability exercise. Okay, okay the next exercise, if you don't have a stick available, a lot of times it's easy to have a stick, but if you don't have one, okay, we're just going to do an exercise called shoulder turns. Okay, so I'm going to be behind uh, Pierre. He's going to be in the same position. He's going to set his feet, he's going to set his core, he's going to set his posture. He's tight, nice and tight right here. Shoulders are back, head is neutral, arms are going to be down at his side right here. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to do like I did with the stick, I'm going to try and rotate his shoulders, and he's going to now let me turn his shoulders. If I turn him, he turns him back to neutral. Then I'm going to switch. I'm going to try and turn him this way. Then I'm going to switch back this way. And then back the other way. And as you go, you can speed it up. You really don't have to push that much. He's trying to maintain that same position without letting me turn him. Okay? Keep going. About 30 seconds. We're back and forth. Back and forth. No lower hip movement. Nothing moves. He's just trying to stay stable in that position by keeping his core set tight. Good. Now, a little bit more advanced version of that, shoulder turns if you don't have a stick, is I'm going to be around front of Pierre. He's going to get in that same position. We call it our core neutral position. It's always the same. Okay, now he's going to put his hands up like if he was shooting a gun at eye level. Okay, all right, and he's always trying to keep that on the target. He's going to not let me move his hands. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it, try and move his hands. He's going to try and keep me. I don't need to, to use a lot of pressure because i got leverage on him. So his feet are dug in. He's got good pressure on the ground. He's trying to tear the wood apart. Okay, his body position is perfect. Okay, he's got his posture set. His, his core set. His feet are set. Okay. Now I try and push his hands, all right, and he tries to keep him there. If I go the other direction, he tries to keep him there. I push him down, he tries to keep him there. I push him up. Okay, now if you anticipate, all you have to do is tell him to close his eyes, so if he closes his eyes, he can't see what direction you're pushing on. Okay, all I'm trying to do is give him different pressure in different areas. He's trying to keep his hands there on the target. Hands on the target. Don't let me move you. Don't let me move you. Again, you're going to feel this down deep, okay? Our core is like the core of an apple. It's not on the outside like you see a lot of infomercials and people train on infomercials. It's inside. It's down deep. And you feel these exercises down deep. Thanks, Pierre. So that's a few core stability exercises that you can utilize that will help you on the setup of your lifts um, with the, with the uh, strength and power movement. Okay, now we're just going to spend a few minutes talking about program design, implementation, because it's one thing to learn the proper technique with all of the exercises, but Really the hard part for a lot of people is just how do I put all this stuff together? That's probably, you could probably get questions like that every day, you're just inundated with them. Now, training of course has to be personalized. We can't cover every facet of how things can be implemented, but just some basic ideas of how you would pair up certain exercises, maybe when you would focus on the explosive moves, when you would do squats, how, how many days in between squats and deadlift sessions, for example, just things like that. You know, I'll take you through what we do. Okay. And, you know, we. Coaching is an element of stealing from other people. I don't know yeah. to steal everything from, but you steal ideas and you adapt them to your situation. So this is what we do. We, we do pair up a lot of exercises that are usually non-competing exercises. We'll do our movement stuff, which we didn't, uh, movement stuff first, which we didn't cover today, but then take it into our explosive type work, whether it's plyometrics or jumping motion or platform work like we've covered. Right. So that's going to be earlier on in our workout program when you're fresher, when you need to coordinate your movements and your nervous system has to be fresh. Right. So we want to do that stuff early on. And then we hit you know, the main lifts, the bench, the squat, whatever, right after that, your main, your main strength movements. But we will pair them up with a non-competing exercise because we're trying to get as much done in a shorter period of time. Now, if you're doing right. your own individual work, that's not as much of a necessity, but your body is more optimal and more efficient if your workouts are fast-paced within an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. Right. You know, so hormonally that works best. So there's the advantage of pairing things up. Even if you're doing a heavy squat, you can go do a pull up, right. rest a minute and come back, you know, a minute and a half, you should be ready for your squat versus just standing there yeah. and not doing anything, okay? 
when it gets extremely heavy, if you feel like you've got to provide you know, a little more mental focus and things like that, maybe you can do your heaviest sets by themselves. Right. But warming up, why not get work done in, in, in that fashion where you're doing something in between? Or even a torso exercise in between that. With my own personal workouts, I got limited amount of time. I still like to train somewhat heavy a couple days a week. I'm trying to get as much done in a shorter period of time. So I'll do non-competing exercises and then go back to my heavy exercise which I should be recovered for. Yeah, so you okay. can do something such as you could, you could do a bench press and then you could do a single leg of deadlift right. or a Romanian deadlift in between each exactly. set, something like that. For exactly, yeah. so there's a, there's a template we use on what exercises we do with which, um, you know, maybe the squat we'll do a pull up or a row, you know, bench trip press is more hip extension, right. that type of thing. And we vary it according to the individual. Some athletes I have can't do it that way, so we'll right. vary it accordingly. Where we'll adjust it, but we're, we're always trying to not have a lot of downtime and maximize uh, what, our time in the gym. And that indirectly develops a lot of work capacity. Yeah, definitely. And you get in better shape just by doing it that way. So if you have somebody that comes in and trains and hasn't trained that way, they take them a while to get used to oh, training yeah. fast like that. Definitely. Okay? Now we're not sacrificing strength work, we're still doing our strength work. But we're just filling in them downtimes with something. It might be a flexibility exercise. Okay, so there's always we're always trying to do something. There's something going on. The rest periods are always accounted for. So we're trying to do as much in as short a period of time as possible without affecting the top end lift. You know, with something that's similar. Right now, with the skill-based exercises, <laughs> those you would just focus on alone. For example, the Olympic lifts. Right. Would you do something in between those exercises, or you just want to concentrate? Usually, on maybe a lifts? flexibility type right. exercise, okay. something that really doesn't tax you too much. Yeah. Um, just because we're not trying to tap into the nervous system, we're really working on technique and focusing on right. technique and make sure that's solid. And then after that, the workout kind of speeds up because we're fit more things in our downtime after yeah. that. Okay, but that is usually really just in the workout. And then the major strength movements come after that. Right. And then our assistance stuff is more of a circuit fashion. Again, non-competing, trying to get a lot of stuff done. And we have a lot of focuses, especially young athletes. Right. And uh, you know, that's kind of where we handle it. Yeah, for some, someone improving the bench press, the incline alternating press may be an assistance exercise. Right. And then in between each set of that, you would, right. might do yeah. pull-ups yeah. or core work exactly. or something along those or lines. Or the RDLs or yeah. something like RDLs. We do both, uh, you know, movements where, where we're doing uh, uh, single leg movements and movements like we went over today with both feet on the ground. So we want to hit them both because in athletics, you know, usually very rarely are you jumping off two feet. It's usually one foot at a time. So right. We got to hit them both. Yeah. What about volume? Now you do. We do a lot of work here, so work capacity definitely comes into play. What about volumes? For example, if we're going to do the bench press, will we do 10 sets or are we going to do a lower amount of sets and then move on to another exercise? We usually hit between three and five sets. Okay. Yeah, as a general rule. You know, so obviously if it's extremely heavy, you're not going to be doing five sets unless the volume's really low. Maybe right. Maybe you're doing, you know, five singles, which is really still tough. You know? Yeah. Um, just as an example. But um, usually three to five sets of heavy work. Okay, one or two warm-up sets leading up to that. Um, you know, unless we're on certain specialized programs, you know, I have 50, 60 programs on my computer that will yeah. use at some sort of time, right. you know, whenever we need them. But for the most part, you know, in our template, it's three to five heavy sets, you know, and the other stuff's kind of specialized on, hey, this athlete needs this specialty or whatever, then we plug in a special program right. for them. Still kind of following the same template, but the strength works special yeah. for them. Right, so the, the assessment allows you to determine right. what weak links there right. are. Like exactly. for example, when I trained here, some of my one-legged strength wasn't so great, so we would do barbell squats, and right. then we would do a lot of one-legged moves exactly. afterwards to address those imbalances. Right. Right. So even if someone comes in with the goal of saying, I just want to improve my bench, squat, and deadlift, after the assessment program, you may determine that, fine, we'll work on those three drills, but we want to add some additional exercises right. to correct those imbalances. Yeah, we want to show them how we can help them all around. Right. You know, a lot of people, are, when they know they got an issue, then they want to correct it. Yeah. Sometimes they don't know it yet. Yeah. They have an issue until it's shown that you got a weakness somewhere, an imbalance, yeah. flexibility, or something, somewhere that affects your performance. Yeah, exactly. Now, with these power exercises we covered today, would we work out four times a week? Well, when I trained here, we did about four workouts per week. For some people, it's going to be three. How many days per week do you think someone could work out? You know, for a more advanced person, if you want to make gains, four days a week. Yeah. You know, somebody that's just beginning. 
know, we have younger athletes, we'll start them off two days and then three days a week. And a lot of times it's dependent upon your schedule. Yeah. You know, for somebody that's wanting to make gains and they're advanced, it comes down to this. If you get more workouts in than somebody else does on a year, a year's time, who's going to get stronger? Right. Given that they're well planned out and you recover, obviously. But if you're training four days a week and somebody else is training two or three, that adds up over a period of time. And who's going to get the benefit? You are because you're training right. more. You know, it comes down to, that's what I tell athletes. The more I can get you in here within reason, the better I can make it. Right. So the more you can train and recover, exactly. the better off you are. Right. Now, basically, what I, I noticed is that every two days, we basically cover the entire body in terms of every muscle group. Right. So maybe, for example, on Monday, we'll do squats, and then we'll do upper body pulling. And then the next day, we may do some lower body pulling, such as deadlifts, and then upper body pressing. So, for example, if I were, when I worked out here Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, it seemed that every, month, every two days, we would complete a full body workout. Right. So each major muscle group is getting hit about two times per week. Right. We're covering the motions that hit those muscle yeah, groups basically. Exactly. So we did it more motion based. Right. You know, and then that way we can vary the exercises that fit the motion. Uh, so, but yeah, you're correct in, in the fact that if you're, if you're training four days a week, we're going to hit them twice. If you're training three days a week, we're going to try and hit them twice, but you're not going to get them as complete as if you did a four-day split. Right. Right. So, for example, improving squats and deadlifts, we may only do heavy squats one time in a week. The other day may be something a variation more, yeah, well. like chain squats or band right. squats or something like right. that, walking and lunges, something right. along those lines. And then bench press, we may only do that one time in the week, and then the right. next time maybe incline presses or right. floor presses, some other kind of pressing variation. Yeah, we'll do the main lifts once a week. We could do them twice a week if we needed to focus on that. Yeah. But usually it's the main lift that we've, we've talked about and a variation of that the second day of the week. And then both days you'll try and do some type of individual leg or arm work too, whether it's with dumbbells or you know individual leg work. Uh, where we'll get a little more of our quads, quads worked in that fashion and still hit the single leg, hip and leg, push type movement. Right. But there's a little bit more quad development. Right. Uh, again, because of athletics, you can do that more with the feet where you have two feet planted. So, yeah, there's usually the main lift and then the variation the second, second part of the week. Right. Sounds good. Now, with workout length, is there a certain time frame you try to keep it within? And for example, if you want to finish the workout in an hour, is it okay to go longer than that? What are your thoughts on how long a workout should be? As you know, I'm, I'm <laughs> an advocate of pushing somebody through their workout. Right. You know, when, you, when you came here, that was, I think, the number one thing. That was a surprise initially when you adapted. Sure. Yeah, it was. You know, our workout length here, because of the movement skills involved, is 80 to 90 minutes. Right. If, we have an athlete where we're not doing as much movement. It's usually 60 to 75 minutes, you know, from start to finish. Right. And that includes stretching yeah, and exactly. warming up in the workout right. and the whole nine yards. Because we're actually fitting our 20 to 25 sets, of, which is usually, you know, the amount of strength work we're doing in about 40 minutes, you know. Right. So we got a lot of work to do in a short period of time, but it's well planned. It's like practice. Basically, everything is right. scripted. When you do it, when you, you know, how much when you get a drink, how much rest to take. That way we can ensure that we're gonna get everything done in the amount of time that we have. Yep, yeah. sounds good, you do a great job. And that brings us towards the end of the program now, Mastering the Power Exercises. And if you have any questions about the material on here, you can contact us. And thank you very much.